Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and today I'm going to do a review of a Sawaki 18 watt solar panel. So in front of me I have a small solar panel, and part of the reason why I wanted to uh, take a look at reviewing this is recently I did a project called the Solar Ammo Can, which is a battery, a solar charge controller, and several connections in there to pull power back out, uh, essentially a portable solar chargeable battery. Now I already had a solar panel to go with it, which was this one, which is rated at 15 watts. Uh, it happens to be a solar panel that I already had, but I know there's some other folks who want to build a project similar to this, and I was wondering, well, what would be a good solar panel for them to have? So if we take a look at this one right here, the very first thing we're going to notice is that it's relatively thin, and it's actually flexible. It's on a plastic base, as opposed to this one, which is made with glass and aluminum. This is the style of construction that would be typical of a very large solar panel that you might have mounted on the roof of your house. But if you wanna go camping or maybe you're, you're on the go because you're in some sort of uh, an emergency situation, you would actually rather have something shatterproof and lightweight. So this style of a panel is actually perfect for that. Uh, it is about um, 12 inches by 16 and a half inches and it has grommets in the corner. Now if we flip it over, we can actually see the spec sheet on the back here. And that tells us that it's uh, going to be at about 22 volts open circuit and just over one amp at short circuit current. I can also see on the back here that we've got just sort of a short little pigtail as our power out from here. And the reason why we have that is this actually comes with a couple of different power adapters. So included with this kit, uh, the two main ones are some alligator clips. and then also a cigarette lighter plug. So the alligator clips are handy because that's a great way to connect directly to a 12 volt battery, just direct 12 volt solar charging. Uh, otherwise, uh, we have that cigarette lighter plug. So let's say you wanted to top off the 12 volt battery in your car. Uh, you could plug the solar panel in here and the other end plug into your cigarette lighter plug. Now you would need the type of car though where your cigarette lighter power is always on even when the key is off. A lot of cars now, that cigarette lighter uh, power is only available when the ignition is turned on. So I thought what we would actually do here today is test the solar panel. So I've got my multimeter right here. I can check for voltage. And I also have a clamp on ammeter, so we can literally short circuit the panel and measure how much current it produces while doing that. And then we can hook this solar panel up to the solar ammo can. Now also in the box, a couple other little accessories. It does have some very small suction cups, just cheap, simple little accessories, but it looks like these are designed to fit right into the corners. So we can just squeeze these right through And now we would be able to take the solar panel and stick it onto a window or onto a car, for example. Uh, also in here, we have a pair of some small carabiner clips. Likewise, we can hook these through the grommets in the corners. And this would actually be useful for something like clipping directly to a backpack. You could actually be hiking, uh, have the solar panel with you, have it connected to a 12 volt battery and be charging. Uh, likewise, you could uh, hang it off pretty much anything else that you could think of with these clips in the corner. So now let's take the solar panel outside. We'll bring our meter with us and we'll see how this panel actually rates up in the real world. So we're now here out in the full sun. It is a winter day, but nice and sunny. And what I'm going to do is plug in our little pigtail right here. And then this quick, quick connect. We have this quick connector to go to our alligator clips. And then with those alligator clips, I'm just going to connect those up to my multimeter. And I'm going to set that to measure volts. And I'm going to measure DC volts. Just clipping these right on my leads. And then I'm going to flip this over to expose it to the sun. And right now I'm measuring 24.33 volts. Uh, very high, it's nice and cold out and it's sunny and there's no current drawn here. So we expect this to be a very high number. 
Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure current instead. So to do that, we're going to go to a different setting on the meter and we're going to use this clamp feature. The other thing is in this case, we're actually going to short circuit the solar panel. Now normally you would never, ever, ever uh, short circuit. Ooh, it's windy out here. You would never short circuit anything electrical, but you can do that specifically with photovoltaic solar panels. So if I just connect these together, I go to measure current, and then I set it to make sure we're measuring DC current. And then the other thing is I need to go around only one of the two wires. And then we'll put this straight up in the bright sun. And I'm getting 0.9 0.94, 0.95, just a little less than one amp of power. So it really is rated at about one amp. Now here's a little something just to show you about how uh, angle of the sun matters. If I tilt this up pretty much straight into the sun, we can see our current is going to be right around one amp. But I'm pretty much straight to the sun. If I just lay this flat, uh, we're not as direct to the sun anymore, and this is dropping down to about uh, 0.66 amps. So we're only getting about two-thirds as much power when the solar panel is not pointed directly at the sun. So that's always important, uh, both the, the direction of the panel as well as the tilt. So point your panels into the sun, people. So what I've done here is I just have the solar panel propped up against the ammo can and we've got these alligator clips. Uh, so what we would do is hook them up to our solar input. Odd thing I just found about, these are weird size alligator clips. They're actually just a little bit too big to fit inside and clamp in place. Likewise, if you uh, unscrew the banana jacks, they don't fit either. They're just a weird size. So what I'm gonna do instead is just use some jumpers to connect the solar panel to our solar in connection on here. Again, observing polarity. So here are the black, the negative, goes to the black, the negative. And right away on our display, we see the voltage jump up a little bit, was 12.7, now it went to 12.8, 12.9, and we see our solar panel symbol and the arrow flashing, showing that it is indeed charging. I know this is kind of hard to read here, but right now that says 13.0 uh, volts and the little arrow next to the solar panel symbol is flashing, indicating charging. Now, the other thing I want to do here is measure current. So I've still got my meter here set to measure current and on the DC side. So what I'm going to do is just go around our one conductor. Right there, we're up to 8.7, 8.8, 0.9 amps. So the other thing to keep in mind, too, is that the current rate is partly going to depend on how charged or discharged the battery is. The more discharged it is, uh, the more the, the quicker the current is going to go as well. But this panel is only rated for up to one amp, so it looks like it's working exactly as designed. So overall, I think this is a pretty decent solar panel. It's light, it's flexible, it's durable, uh, it's extremely portable. All that being said, it's pretty low power. This is about as small of a solar panel as you would ever want to be using for charging a 12 volt battery. Uh, but considering its price and everything else, I think this panel is actually a really great match for a small portable solar system like the Solar Ammo Can. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe, leave a comment, uh, check out my projects on 300mpg.org. And until next time, stay charged up.